What's good, YouTube? It's Blossom coming here with the infamous beginner's guide to my vertical sleeve gastrectomy. So this little booklet, I've been talking about it in my past two videos, and this will be the video where I go in depth on what's in this actual little booklet. Hopefully, it's not a boring video. I'm gonna try to make it as entertaining as it is. It may be time consuming. Let me just also say this: I want my video to be a, 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 at the most six minutes so you know try my best i don't want to i have a short attention span so if i'm not about to sit through a 10 minute video i shouldn't expect for you to do it because i know i'm not gonna do it from hell no nah. when you open up the booklet it pretty much goes into a welcome to your patient manual it gives you information on who your surgeon is my surgeon is Dr. Zinni. This is him. I met him one time. I saw him two times though. Um, I had to go to the hospital in Livonia to get some like x-rays and stuff and I saw him in the parking lot. I was gonna say hi to him but I don't think he probably would have remembered me. So it was, I feel like it would have been weird if I walked up to him like, hey, you my surgeon. And he's like, okay, I'm busy. Get the fuck away from me. Like. Okay. But he's nice though, so he probably would not have said that. He probably would have been like, yeah. I do a lot of surgeries a day. Okay, so also in this my little booklet, it does have like a lot of questions that people tend to ask when it comes to the surgery. Questions like, can you regain the weight? Will you have excess skin? What can you do for excess skin? Um, it goes into like vitamin supplements. It goes into workouts. Can you work out? When can you work out? Um, since I'm someone that likes to work out, I am gonna read the answer to that. All right, so with the exercise, it says exercise is an important component with weight loss surgery. Not only does it burn calories, but it also improves mobility and overall health, which I definitely agree with. Go to the gym. Don't think that this is just a magic pill. An exercise program that is specifically designed for each individual will begin within a few months after surgery. However, when I spoke to my surgeon, since I do go to the gym a lot, he did approve me to just like start walking a month after my surgery and then from there they have like tiers of how much like weights you can lift because I love weightlifting like it's I can do it I prefer legs but I have to fall in love with arms because if I'm not I'm not trying to get bad wings yeah. let's say I'm like on the um, roller coaster or something and I want to put my arms up I don't want to have a picture clip in my arm right here but my skin all the way back here that ain't cute Another thing that you do need to know about the surgery before you have it, stop smoking. If you smoke cigarettes, if you smoke weed. Shockingly, I'm in a weight loss group on uh, Facebook and you don't know how many people talk about how they smoke weed and they want to know if you get drug tested. Quiet ass is kept, I don't smoke weed. But I did want to take a little smoke before my surgery, but I didn't do it because I'm a nice citizen and I didn't want to get in trouble. And I feel like after my surgery, if I smoke weed or try and eat an edible for the first time, I might die. So, no smoking for me. All right, so the next section that I'm going to go into is getting ready for your, for your surgery day. This page just pretty much has everything that you should be doing. Um, I'm gonna go over a little bit. Uh, learn how to eat slowly. That's something that I'm going to do during my pre-op, which actually started today, March 20th shoot february 25th is the first day that i start my pre-op diet going to go more into detail with my pre-op diet because mine's is totally different than a lot of people's a lot of people's and i'm low-key kind of thankful for it um dr zinni i don't even think that he's had any people die from his surgery from things people that he's operated on so if I don't have to do the liquid diet like everyone else, I'm cool. I do have to do the liquid diet, but stay tuned. I'm gonna get towards that towards the end of the video. Okay, so on here, it pretty much goes through the things that you should already be doing. Eating slowly should take you about 30 minutes to complete your meal. Drinking 64 ounces of water a day. Trying to eat six small meals a day. 
quit smoking start exercising and try finding like people in your support group like for a support group I should say um, also clean out your kitchen get all the nasty shit out of your refrigerator have I did it yes do I have still have a bottle of wine in my refrigerator yeah I gotta throw it out but it's like my favorite wine I don't want to take I don't want to throw it out I really don't want to but I'm going to have to because I didn't drink it last night so <clears throat> that's gonna be a sad little moment for me that I, I still haven't came over yet what should you bring to the hospital so don't be bringing your puppy, don't be bringing all types of unnecessary stuff. Don't bring, what's something unnecessary that you would bring to the hospital? I don't know, cause I'm like really, really like basic when it comes to stuff. However, according to this little booklet, the things that you should bring to the hospital are a robe, slippers, um, a telephone list. You know, we go on 90s route. You wanna bring your phone with contacts, so you better write the numbers down, slide it off. Bring a toothpaste and toothbrush. We don't want to see your yellow teeth. Bring some deodorant, because you don't want to be in there musty. Bring some shampoo, if you want to wash your hair. Bring a hairbrush. Bring a small notepad to where, you know, if you write down any questions or anything, you know, you can give that to the doctor or whatever. Me personally, I already asked all the questions. And I even have downloaded an app that shows me step by step of what happens in the surgery. It freaked me the fuck out, to be truly honest with you. But it's very informative. Um, I'm glad that I watched it because certain, certain parts of the surgery before, I don't know if I'll be knocked out or not, but it's going to be pretty awkward seeing someone strapped down my arm. I've never been strapped down that way, so... It's gonna be kind of weird for me. So I'm hoping that I'm knocked out during that section. Um, bring very comfortable clothing. Bring sweatpants, sweatshirt, uh, pajamas. Bring stuff that's loose because, you know, they're doing stuff with your stomach. They're cutting your stomach. And let me say this, I love leggings. I wear leggings almost every day, or jeggings, or skinny jeans. I'm willing to put these leggings down to put on some sweatpants so I can be, I can be comfortable. I don't want to feel just in some tight stuff, like you know, sleep. Bring a pillow so you can ride with it in the car when you're going home. That, I am not taking a pillow. I'm bringing my teddy bear, yes. I'm a adult with a teddy bear and that's perfectly fine because it has a lot of sentimental value to me. Now, also some things that you can bring are pictures of your family, um, some things like books, magazines, etc. Leave your cash, leave your jewelry, leave the expensive things at home because you're in the hospital, you do not need it. You do not need to flex on people in the hospital. And also for me, and then also for me, I'm going to record what I'm packing away. It's really going to be like really close to this list. And I get to show you my teddy bear because he's fucking awesome. He's been around the United States, y'all. Like he's legit. Um, what else? <laughs> Let's go into the next section. How will you know if you're eligible to get discharged? So the booklet goes tells you that too. It says, are you able to keep liquids down? You can't be throwing up while you're in the hospital. Um, you got to get that in control. You can't be throwing up. Can you keep liquids down is one of the things that um, they will look at to see if you can get discharged from the hospital. Another thing is if you are nauseous. Me personally, I'm a very nauseous person, so it's like I'm kind of nervous about that, um, especially around the time when my cycle starts. I can smell something and just become so nauseous. Like, legitly, when I get pregnant, I'm probably going to know I'm pregnant because I'm probably just going to be nauseous and throwing up everywhere. I never had a kid, so that's why I said that fact about me. I have no children. I just have a niece and a nephew. Another question is, can you pee by yourself? At a moment, they are going to take the little tube out your little cooter. I know technically it's in your cooter, but I'm going to say the cooter. So my apologies for being immature. 
they're going to make sure that you know how to pee by yourself you don't need a bag to pee so that's one thing also another thing that they're going to make sure you can do is poot poot toot toot and poot more they're going to be filling up your stomach with air so there's two ways to get that air out of your body either through your mouth or through your booty hole so you're going to be farting up a storm so if you're people if you're someone like me i'm one of those people that yes obviously i fart females fart but i don't like farting in front of people like legitly if i'm with a guy if i have like with my boyfriend or something i don't fart in front of him if i fart in front of you that means i really like am comfortable around you because i don't fart in front of people i will legit get up go to the bathroom do my thing and come out so many people tell me they just fart all over i actually had a co-worker that just farted all the fucking time and that shit annoyed the living shit out of me but I feel like I'm probably gonna have to be that co-worker that's poop, 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 and tooting all up on the... And did I sit on the aisle at my job, too? That's gonna be terrible. Um, Jesus. All right, so another thing is, will you be able to get out of the bed by yourself? Um, one thing that I did um, find when I was researching is you're gonna have to be able to get up and walk every two hours you got to get your ass out that bed and you got to walk and the thing about walking is people say that you feel better after you walk like the more you walk the better you feel and that's something that I'm mentally trying to get in my head now so when I actually am there post op laying in my bed figuring out what the fuck did I just do I'm gonna tell my ass and go walk go walk somewhere and lastly, another thing that they're going to take into consideration is your pain levels. Is your meds working? Um, are you in pain? Are you okay? Are you doped up? That's, some, that's like the last thing that they're going to take into consideration before you are released from the hospital. All right, so now in the video, I'm finally going to tell you guys what my pre-op is. The way my diet is set up, um, pretty much, it's an eight-day diet. So for five days, I will be on a strict calorie limit of 1,000 calories. They told us that you can eat pretty much whatever you want, but I'm so used to eating lean cuisines and stuff. I want to eat three times a day. So I'm pretty much, you know, eating my lean cuisine, lean, lean cuisines and my little healthy frozen foods for those five days. And I can, I can, I can get to, I can get to 1,000. I normally eat when I do like diet really hard I normally eat between 12 to 1500 that's what I was doing when I was trying to get approved for surgery um, when I went to my doctor and she told me my limit that's what I would tell her so for those five days you just have to eat 1,000 calories a day however for a lot of people they are leaning it towards it they say at the most it could be possibly be 1200 if you have i believe it was like diabetes or something like that if you have that then it won't you you don't have to do strictly 1000 it could be up to 1200 so after those five days i start my actual liquid diet and my liquid diet will be the my surgery is on march 5th which is a monday and my liquid diet is from that Friday to the Sunday before. So pretty much on my liquid diet, I'm only drinking protein shakes and clear liquids. Clear liquids could be broth, water, stuff like that. It doesn't, it can't have like chunks and stuff in it. So once um, Sunday is over, the day of my actual surgery, I can't eat anything. I can't even drink water because Obviously, they don't right, want anything. So after your surgery, how will you eat? What will you eat? So pretty much the day that you are in the hospital, you're strictly on clear liquids. So that's things that they're just probably just going to give me. I'm going to pray that I can record myself in the actual hospital and what they're giving me. Um, one to three days post-op, you will be eating like clear liquids still. So pretty much, I'm going to be on clear liquids from Friday to that following Friday, I believe. Four to six days pro-op. 
four to six days post-op, I'm gonna be on clear liquids and high protein drinks. So pretty much I'll be in this stage of my three day pre-op, just drinking protein shakes and drinking water, broth, etc. So then from there, seven to 13 days, I will be fully liquid. And I'll go into like more details of what these stages are. I'm just gonna go through the list of what I'm going through. So from day 14 to 20, I'm on pure pureed foods. From 21 to 34, I'm on soft foods. And after 35 days, I can eat low fat and solid foods. So your baby ain't gonna be eating real ass food until April and that's perfectly fine with me. What's in the clear what's in the clear liquid phase? That's one question that a lot of people ask. What can I eat? Can I eat Doritos? Can I eat this? Can I eat that? It's all right here, dog. I got you. I got you. I'm gonna make sure you're good. So things you can eat. Things you can eat are I'm just gonna read off the list, so that's why I'm looking over here. Just reading that. So you can eat jello, sugar-free of course. You can eat regular or low sodium chicken, beef, broth. You can eat sugar-free popsicles, which I'm in, in love with. My father, he's a diabetic, so I grew up with these popsicles. Eating regular popsicles are weird as fuck because the texture is different, it's weird. You can drink diluted juices, which are 100% juice. So I don't, what was it? I think she said like the cran grape and stuff like that. You can't drink that. Um, crystal light. And you can have decaffeinated coffee. Getting into the four to six day clear liquids. That's when you incorporate your protein shakes. So just add in protein to what I just said. Right, so now when you're on the actual full liquid diet, Here's some of the things that you can pick up while you're at the store. So you can pick up cream soups such as chicken, mushroom, potato, and tomato. Milk, which is probably about 1%. Low sugar, instant breakfast. I don't know what that is. Carnation instant breakfast. I don't eat breakfast, so I don't know what that is. Um, Non-fat yogurt, cream of wheat or rice. I don't eat that. 100% juice, sugar-free popsicles, no sugar added to fudge sickles and cream sickles. That's going to be fun. Um, sugar-free pudding. That's going to be fun. Coffee or tea with no caffeine for two weeks. So now when you're on the actual full liquid diet, here's some of the things that you can pick up while you're at the store. So you can pick up cream soup such as chicken, mushroom, potato, and tomato. Milk, which is probably about 1%. Low sugar, instant breakfast, I don't know what that is. Carnation, instant breakfast, I don't eat breakfast, so I don't know what that is. Um, Non-fat yogurt, cream of wheat or rice, I don't eat that. 100% juice, sugar-free popsicles, no sugar added to fudge sickles and cream sickles, that's going to be fun. Um, Sugar-free pudding, that's going to be fun. Coffee or tea with no caffeine for two weeks. So now for the puree side of the diet. Some of the things that you can eat slash pick up from the store are, you can pick up for, it's going to be some of the same stuff. So you can still do the cream soups. You can do chili without, with or without beans. So you can add beans on there. Nice. You can eat low fat cottage cheese. You can eat smooth yogurt made with Splenda slash artificial sweeteners. You can eat cream of wheat slash rice. You can eat low sugar oatmeal. Ooh, you can eat chicken, turkey, and fish. Nice. I know all these things, but <laughs> I don't know why I'm so fucking excited for this, this for this phase. Um, again, some of your vegetables and juices, sugar-free pudding sugar added applesauce low citrus fruits with no skin slash fillings obviously you can have low fiber vegetables um instant mashed potatoes eggs and egg substitute i'm not a fan of eggs so i will not be eating eggs and for the soft foods this is where things get a little bit of fun so here you can eat soft cheeses you can eat low fat cottage 
soft cheeses. You can eat low-fat cottage cheese, non-fat yogurt, milk, ground beef. You can eat eggs, refried beans, cream of wheat, oatmeal, grits, mashed potatoes, bananas, unsweetened applesauce, soft vegetables such as cooked carrots, peas, vegetables that are easily mashed with a fork. And you can eat tuna fish. And in this phase, you're going to start uh, eating your cow's Also, let me say this for my supplements for the first month after my surgery I, I have to take a children's vitamin so for the person out there that judged me for eating a children's vitamin and having that on my past video there you go all right so with that being what you're going to eat during the different phases of post-op and pre-op want to go into details of some things that you need to take into consideration before you decide that you want to get the surgery make sure to know here's some things that I didn't know make sure that you have a cup don't drink out of a straw because straw can pull air into your stomach and that can make you full when you're not full and it can bring discomfort to you make sure that you eat slowly like I said earlier your meal should be about at least 30 minutes chew slowly make sure that you don't have any big chunks going into your stomach because your stomach is still healing a month out make sure that you eat your vitamins not eat take your vitamins make sure you take your vitamins make sure you take your protein shakes make sure you get in all your grams with this surgery it's not something that's little like you legit this is like a huge surgery and one thing that i think a lot of people especially a lot of people that i've watched on youtube and seen on these uh weight loss facebook pages are a lot of people they think that it's just like this magic pill and it's not you cannot just get this surgery and expect for you to drop 100 pounds and you're looking like beyonce no i know someone who had this surgery and gain their weight back there are people that weren't successful with this surgery because they didn't change their mindset yes they're going into your stomach they're changing your stomach when they change your stomach it changes some things in your body um other than make your stomach smaller for example my surgeon told me that it changes your metabolism it boosts your metabolism ladies it messes with your hormones you're more fertile 18 months up to 18 months after your surgery i follow a few women on instagram that got fucking pregnant a month after their surgery not i follow a few women on instagram that got pregnant a year after their surgery and pregnant again after their first child so you're pretty fertile it's not that's just one thing that i just want to make sure that people know that this isn't just like this magic pill you have to eat right you have to take your supplements you have to get in your protein and you have to go to the gym even if you're not physically able to get up and go to the gym you need to get up and walk every two hours especially after you have the surgery because if you get a blood clot you're going to be back in the hospital for god knows how long so really take that into consideration and also know that everyone is different yes we all may have similar body types but inside we are all different we all have different fingerprints we're fucking different don't think that just because some girl across the world in nevada lost 60 pounds in three months that you're going to lose 60 pounds in three months and you weigh the same as her you're the same height however you're two different people you are absolutely two different people you're not it's a possibility that you're not gonna lose 60 pounds in three months no it's not it's not guaranteed don't get discouraged because you may have lost 20 pounds or less in your first month i saw someone that was upset that she was 20 days post-op and she only lost 20 pounds and it's like you don't understand that it's people out here that did not have the surgery that they can't lose weight at all that's why we're getting the surgery right to lose weight make sure that we are bettering our health making sure that we don't get diseases in the future for example diabetes runs in my family and i don't want that i want to have a child i'm not going to be a high-risk pregnancy i'm not about to gain 50 pounds 
and be over 300 pounds after having my child and not able to run around with my child like no that's hell no I'm not doing that don't think that this is just a magical pill that you can swallow and you're magically skinny no don't think a month out you're going to be back to eating Doritos you're going to be eating macaroni you've been eating like shit for the longest listen to your body your body knows what's best for you that's just something that I really just want to get through people's heads like this isn't a magic pill even when I tell people that I'm getting the surgery they're like oh well that's not that's not that's not hard work you can do it without it okay I worked out my worked my ass off in 2017 and I lost 25 pounds I'm thankful for it however I need to get to my right weight size because if I continue on with how I am now I'm easily going to be 300 plus pounds looking like shit having a dark ass neck because I'm probably going to get diabetes it's just no no be patient with this surgery be patient for your six months be patient for your three months if you had to wait six months be thankful if you had to wait three months be thankful it's there for a reason and if you can afford to go to Mexico, go to Mexico. I'm not going to judge you for that. However, just know that everyone is different. Your journey is not going to be like the next person's. Your journey is not going to be like mine. And just be patient with the process.